This video is a review of the two-dimensional coordinate plane. We'll start by discussing some of its basic characteristics and then seeing how it can be used with points. If you take a look at a coordinate plane, it has a vertical axis going up and down. That's what we call the y-axis. It also has a horizontal axis spanning left and right. That's what we refer to as the x-axis. And these axes are just number lines where they meet in the middle at the origin, which is the point 0, comma, 0. And speaking of points, every point on the coordinate plane is of the form x, comma, y. And that refers to these axes we have shown. Furthermore, these two axes cut the paper, or the, the plane, into four basic zones, upper right, upper left, bottom left, and bottom right. And those four zones are known as quadrants, and they're numbered in a specific way. The upper right zone is known as quadrant 1. We can abbreviate that as Q1. And then it goes counterclockwise, so all the way to top left would be quadrant 2. Continuing to the bottom left, we'll call this quadrant 3. These are typically labeled with Roman numerals, and then all the way Around bottom right, we'll call this quadrant 4. And that's how we'll refer to the different quadrants or zones in the coordinate plane. Now, any particular point, and let me plot one here in quadrant 1. Any point plotted at the intersection of any grid lines should have an x and y value to it as the structure of each point goes. So if I put a point in quadrant 1, where the x value it lines up with is 6, then the x coordinate of that point would have the number 6, and then we put a comma, and then we put the y coordinate, well, vertically, it lines up with the y coordinate or value of 5, so that would be the point 6, comma, 5. And then if I go over to some quadrant where I'll find a negative value, like let's say quadrant 2, I'll just pick a point over in this area, Again, to label that point, we want to call it x, comma, y. The x coordinate I've picked will be the negative 8 value, so the x coordinate of the point is negative 8. And then the y coordinate that goes with it would be 3. So negative 8, comma, 3 would give us the location or coordinate of that point. Let's also recall or review some basic formulas that will help us with items on this coordinate plane. First of all, we're going to let the two points, uh, x1, comma, y1, and x2, comma, y2, be on the coordinate plane. Now, those are perhaps a little confusing because you don't see many numbers here, but x1 and y1 refer to any given x and y values, like the examples we saw previously on the coordinate plane with numbers. And same thing with x2, y2. That's just another point on the coordinate plane. So given those variable designations, we can define the midpoint as the point that's directly between these two points with the following formula. The x-coordinate of this midpoint will be x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and the y-coordinate will be y1 plus y2 divided by 2. You may also recall that these really represent the averages of the x's and the average of the y for the midpoint between two given points. And then secondly, the distance formula to find the distance between these two given points. You can plug in the corresponding values for x1, y1, x2, and y2 into this formula, which reads the square root of, it's a large square root, inside the square root you'll find x2 minus x1 in parentheses squared plus y2 minus y1 in parentheses squared. And so to find the midpoint or the distance between two points, simply given the points with numbers in for x1, y1, x2, and y2, you'll plug them in for each of these variables in whatever formula makes sense for the question being answered. Let's do an example where we graph with a graphing calculator and a specific given viewing window. So this exercise will just get us oriented or familiarized, or perhaps you've seen this before, but it will bring it back from memory. 
uh, how we can use a graphing calculator such as a, such as a TI-84+, uh, which I'll demonstrate with, to do these types of activities. So first, let's take out a graphing calculator and, and turn it on. And then if we go up to the upper left button, which usually reads Y equals, pressing that will take us to a window where we can input various equations. So in the Y1 equals first opening, we're going to we're going to type in our function, which is defined as the square root of 8x plus 5. To press the square root, we'll have to use the second key. And then there's a button down the left side about halfway with a little square root symbol uh, above the button. When you press second, it will allow you to select that square root symbol. And so in the symbol, which it gives us a space, type something else into, we'll type our function as 8x, 8, and then there's a key with an x on it in the upper left zone of the calculator buttons. Uh, it has like an x, comma, t, comma, theta, comma, and those are other letters we don't need right now, but pressing that will produce an x in the screen. So we have 8x, we also want plus 5, so we just continue by typing plus, and then 5, and there it is, our function is y equals the square root of 8x plus 5. Now, this particular problem also specified a viewing window. To adjust the viewing window, we'll go ahead and press the window button, which is to the right of the y equals button on the top row of buttons. When we press window, it gives us a, a range of options here. And given that this problem specifies a window of first negative 5, comma, 15, that, that refers to the x range, and meaning the x min should be negative 5. Now the default is set to negative 10. We'll change that simply by typing in negative 5. And then the x max, we'd like to be 15. And then the second set of values will give us our y range. So the y min, as designated, should be 0. And the y max should be 20. After specifying these window range values, we can simply hit the graph key in the upper right corner and then take a look at the graph produced by this equation in this specific given window. In our next example, we'll take a look at how we can now by hand interact with a coordinate plane graph. And this problem, this example has a few parts. Part A says, make a table of values and sketch the graph of the equation. Part B says find the x and y intercepts. And part C says verify with a graphing calculator. So we'll attempt to go through each of these parts one at a time. Part A said to make a table and sketch those points. Now in this case, as you may have done before, you can pick uh, what values you'd like to use in the table. It's typically good to use something a little negative and a little positive to get a full view of it. For this, I'm just going to pick x values of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then with those x input values for the given equation, which is y equals negative x squared plus 5, we're going to compute each of the output or y values from the equation. So when x is negative 2, if I put that in for x, I'll have negative negative 2 squared, which is 4, so negative 4 plus 5, which is 1. So the point negative 2 comma 1 goes with our function, it's in our table produced by the equation of our function, and we can plot it. That means the x-coordinate is negative 2, so go 2 left from the origin, the y-coordinate is 1, so negative 2, 1 will land us right where those grid marks intersect. We'll continue this for the rest of the points as well, Negative 1 as an input produces 4 as an output. We can graph that point the same way. Moving on, uh, negative 0 squared plus 5 is 5, so 0, 5 is a point. When x is 1, negative 1 squared plus 5 is 4, so we have the point 1, comma 4. And lastly, for our table, when x is 2, we have 1 for the y value, so 2 comma 1. And with these five points in play, of course we may recall that a, a function of this form is quadratic, which should produce a parabola, and that does seem to be the shape 
produced when we go ahead and connect our points, which we'll do here on the graph. And so there's our, the graph of our function. Now the second part of this problem says to find the intercepts. Well, you may recall that this is done by setting x and y values to zero and solving for the other. Or, in other words, we could simply kind of keep the table idea going. If I just make another table, but make it shorter with only zeros going in for x or y, the corresponding values we'd find with those zeros would tell us the intercept for this function. We actually already found one of them, if you think back to part a, we found the point 0, 5. Now that point, as we've already plotted, is on the y-axis. So that happens to be our y-intercept. To find what value x should be when y is 0, we'll have to set y equal to 0 and then solve for x. Now that would give us 0 equals negative x squared plus 5, which would give us 5 equals x squared which means x equals, if we take the square root of both sides of this, we'll get x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Now, now we're going to have to estimate, since that it's not a nice clean number, the square root of 5. It turns out the square root of 5 is roughly 2.2, .2, so we can just use that to approximate this value. So we'll say plus or minus 2.2. .2. And Actually, if you look at our graph, that's exactly what this looks like. Remember, we just graphed this by hand, but you can see where, where our parabola is crossing the x-axis. Looks like roughly 2.2, .2, or you could at least say it's believable to say that's what it should be. And, and so there's our graph with the intercepts also plotted. Thirdly, let's verify the graph with a graphing calculator as requested. And so we'll go back to our y equals equation editor by hitting the upper left uh, button and then we're going to clear out the function we had there previously and this time type in our new function which was negative x squared type in our x with the x button and then there's a squared button on the left side above the button that says log it just says x squared if you tap the x squared it shows a squared next to whatever you just had in there so we have negative x squared and we want plus 5 now we want to view this in a nice window. We had already changed our window for a previous example. To reset it to one of the standard windows, we can just press the zoom button, which is the middle button in the top row of buttons near the window. And then zoom four and zoom six will give us some nice standard windows. Basically zoom four is zoomed in further and zoom six is zoomed out a little bit. So in this case, um, let's try zoom four. I think we'll be able to see enough by hitting the 4 and then enter. Oh, but as you can tell in this picture, it seems like our graph is cut off. And so if that's the case, we'll simply zoom out a little bit. Let's go back and hit the zoom button, but this time let's try zoom 6. It's another nice standard window. And there you can see our parabola. Just as we've graphed it by hand, it looks to be the same.